You're in the world and you get saved. Your soul, unsaved, is appended to the flesh. Your five senses are dictated to your soul all day long. You don't know nothing about God. You don't hear nothing from God because your soul is interfaced with your flesh. Five senses are dictating to you. That's all you know. All you know is the five senses. So you are close to your old man, which is the flesh, and the five senses contained therein, and they are your source of knowledge, information, and direction. In that realm, you get battered into a place of submission where you say, I need help. Because this flesh life engaged in my soulish tendencies, my sensuality, is killing me. In that state, you cry out to Jesus for salvation. Jesus comes and he says, if you want to be saved, you must what? Repent, which means what? Turn. Now, I turned on my flesh. I turned on my senses. I repented and turned from them. But what's wrong now? Proximity. Proximity is my problem. I turn toward the Lord, but I'm not near to him. So you got born again in close proximity to the flesh. This space is the distance you got to travel. Every step gets rid of the flesh, which is nothing but him being a gal. So the discipline of the word is making him to a man. He got to forge him into a man because in his flesh, he was feminine. He was sensitive. He was soulish. He was tender. He couldn't take commandments. He wasn't fit to be in the army. How could he be a man that warreth in the flesh? Too sensitive. Too weak. Too girly. Everything offends me. Price is heavy shepherding. He's overbearing. He's too loud. He's hurting my little ears with that yelling. Can't use you, bro. That just excludes you from the war. That's all. It ain't going to come, come down to your level. It just excludes you. Look how many people God cut out of the deal. Gideon's army, 30,000 strong. 32,000. Cut them out. He, he don't care about numbers. He's after what? The hundredfold people. All right. Now Mark Saban says, you know what? I mean business. I'm going, I'm going for the gusto. I'm going to the Lord. So he began that journey. Okay. 20% 20, 20 return. He got fruit production to 20%. That means he got rid of that muscle of the flesh. He couldn't kind of wait from it. See, he's leaving it. He's leaving it. Every season has the ability to make you over again. So things start dropping off. I don't want no more dope. I'm through with the liquor. The porno don't affect me. I stopped masturbating. All that stuff is he's moving. Take another step. He at 50%. He's about halfway home. He's losing the works of the flesh. They're dropping off. They're being, they're being exterminated because of distance. He's moving away from the flesh. Proximity. He's not near this anymore. And the devil's yelling at him all along the track. Turn back, man. Go find you a whore. Julia out of town. Get a whore. Get a whore. She'll never know. She's gone for two weeks to see her mother with the kids. You're at home alone. Get your whore. Get a whore. One whore. Watch the porno. There's your computer right there. Your phone. Turn to your phone. A little porno. Chance to dab a porno. No one will know. That's the devil. Saying what? Turn back to that flesh. Feed that flesh, man. You're getting dangerous. You monitor your inside to see what you're really thinking and feeling. It don't matter if you're married or not. Why do you think they're amplifying everything down here? Getting butt lifts left and right. Brazilian butt lifts. Because they're trying to draw people back to the outer court in the flesh. They're down in Punta Cana 
with thongs on left and right. Did everybody see my butt? That ain't them just walking around like that's them trying to draw Samson, entice him into the outer court. But see, here's the trick for, for Christian folk. Oh, I would never get a butt lift. A BBL? No. That's disgusting. But see, with a BBL, they go down to Brazil and they siphon fat out of your stomach and your thighs and pump it into your butt. Did you know that? Fat transference. So what do the people in church do? They get a BBL, but it's a buck, buckhead butt lift. <laughs> know what that is? You go to the fish market. You go to the cheesecake factory. You go to the Capitol Grill. You go to Papa Do's. And you get a BBL, but it's a butt head butt lift. With them chicken wings in your hand. They got a direct siphoning of the fat from their stomach to their butt. But you got a surrogate round the way siphoning. It still got there. But it got there in Buckhead. You saved the flight fees from Atlanta to Brazil. You drove to Buckhead. It was 30 minutes away. But you got the BBL. Strangely quiet. Strangely. It's strangely quiet. Strangely quiet, Timothy. A book head. <laughs> Gary said, don't look at me. A book head butt lift. Doggone. You slicked your own mind, claiming I'd never do it. But you did it with a plate of pasta and chicken wings and all that stuff from the Italian restaurant on Peachtree Street. Joe's slop house around the corner from your house in those chicken wings. The only difference between you and them is they didn't get ranch dressing. Down there in Brazil. But you got rats dressing with your wings. That's the only difference. The ranch dressing. <laughs> Everybody said, don't look at me. Why y'all say don't look at me? Just don't look at me, please. <laughs> that was you see how the mind is? The mind will make up all kind of delusional stuff about what you're doing. But you're doing the same thing, but it's just a surrogate. It's just a round the way of, of doing it. And you still stalled out, not moving, because I'm finding a way to do the same thing they're doing, but I just Christianize it. They're smoking dope and drinking liquor and at the club, but I can't put down these chicken wings. I got the same BBL, but I just didn't go to Brazil to get it. I went to Buckhead. Talking about a Father's Day gathering. Well, why you got three plates of food? It's still flesh. It's still the old man. It's still no temperance. And God still ain't got an army. He still ain't got a vessel. He got nobody to use. Somebody got to sacrifice up everything. That space keeps diminishing as he moves closer to Jesus Christ until he's feeding from Jesus Christ. He's up right up on it. So now he's feeding from the spirit and not from the flesh. The flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. The two are contrary one to the other so that you will not do the things that you would. The process gets you over there and the process keeps you there. You got to keep doing what you did to get there. Why does lust go away when you get right here? It's because the attributes of Jesus Christ does not contain lust. I'm feeding from him. He don't have no lust in him. So how can I onboard lust if my source is not full of lust? 
and the mind will adapt to the thoughts of Christ. That's why the citadel of control is the mind of Christ. If I think the thoughts of Christ, my fruit will bear out to be that of Christ. You can't fake this. You got to monitor your own tabernacle to see what's in you. Are you all caught up in the image of a woman? You come around a girl like Naima, you're looking at body parts, or do you love her? Do you love her, the person? What's, what do you have in you for real? Don't talk about stepping up to her, talking about marrying nobody, you're full of lust. What's in you? Every man must monitor his own heart. You work out your salvation with what? Fear and trembling. Every man must bear his own burden. You monitor what fruit governs you if you want to make it. Because if you don't, you'll deceive yourself. What's the difference between the flesh and the spirit? The spirit governs you for one significant reason that makes it so powerful that it cannot lose. You know what it is? It's non-gender specific. That's what gives it its power. Since it's not gender specific, your soul is going to program to be non-gender specific. I can't lust if I got no gender. My spirit tells my soul to obey it from a non-gender specific perspective. My spirit is non-gender specific. But guess what it tells my soul? You conduct yourself in that physical body like I tell you to. You don't import no feelings and no dictates from your senses. You do as you're told. Why so downcast, oh my soul? You put your trust in God. What does Isaiah 26, 3 say? He will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. Why? Because you trust in him. I deny my flesh. I deny myself. I make my soul turn toward home and God. And it will diminish every carnal fleshly appetite that has tried to dominate me my whole life, including that fork in your hand. You don't do it, you're a liar. You don't want to do it. How can you have all these tools in this ministry and you haven't availed yourself of it? You know why? Because you don't want to. Everybody here should have read, read all six of these books. Because he didn't give the tools to the people down the street in the Baptist church, he gave them to you. The Jesus cult was written in 2001, 23 years and you haven't read it and you had the tool right there in front of you to change you, to go from the Jesus cult to the curse of the inverted soul, to the organic gospel, to the process, to God's celestial network, 1,000% dunamis, the handbook for evangelism, 2,000 ministry tapes on the internet, all the videos, all the podcasts. All the different uh, broadcasts, all the writings of Maisha. Hey, man, you don't want to change. You just lazy. You just hanging around with a dead head mind, being what you've always been, and your soul is right up here in gathering data from your flesh. Concerned about junk that that's not even germane to God. Can't nobody govern you outside of you. I'm not interested in what other people do. I don't care what they do. I'm searching through the inner man to get me home. I'm turning my soul toward heaven. That's why I said set your affections toward things above. If you interface with Jesus, who is a non-gender specific being, it will automatically reprogram your soul not to be sensual. He calls it earthly, sensual, and demonic. That's because it's engaged that flesh. It's ingrained in the senses. And if you really turn somewhere along that track, he's going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost because he sees you for, he sees you for real. You for real. So I'm going to give you power. 
You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. How can he baptize you turned away from him? When you turn to him, when the heart turns to the Lord based on obedience, he says he gives the Holy Ghost to them that obey him. He got to test your obedience. He got to see if you mean business. He got to see if you for real or not. How long do you pray and fast? To get the Holy Ghost, I was down to 120 pounds. This is no variable. This is not an option. I need power. I don't have no power. I got saved, but I need power. Because this soulless stuff is too strong for me. You got to adorn me with power. This ain't your grandmama's play play church. We talking about real vessels of honor fit for the master to use. We have talking about 100% return on investment. He's invested a life. He's looking for 100% return on investment. I gave the body. I gave the blood. I need 100% return. Not 30, not 60. I need an end time army of dedicated folk that will not be denied because they've been replicated to be just like me. Yeah.